Instead, we have the opportunity to make a habit of empathy, to recognize ourselves and each other. I am sorely tempted to vote for Judge Roberts based on my study of his resume, his conduct during the hearings, and a conversation that I had with him yesterday afternoon. He's humble, he's personally decent, and he appears to be respectful of different points of view. And it's absolutely clear to me that Judge Roberts truly loves the law. He couldn't have achieved his excellent record as an advocate before the Supreme Court without that passion for the law. And it became apparent to me in our conversation that he does, in fact, deeply respect the basic precepts that go into deciding 95 percent of the cases that come before the federal courts. Adherence to precedent, a certain modesty in reading statutes and constitutional text, a respect for procedural regularity, and an impartiality in presiding over our adversarial system. All of these characteristics make me want to vote for Judge Roberts. The problem that I face, a problem that's been voiced by some of my other colleagues, both those who are voting for Mr. Roberts and those who are voting against Mr. Roberts, is that while adherence to legal precedent and rules of statutory or constitutional construction will dispose of 95 percent of the cases that come before the court, so that both a Scalia and a Ginsburg will arrive at the same place most of the time on those 95 percent of the cases, what matters on the Supreme Court are the 5 percent of cases that are truly difficult. In those cases, adherence to precedent and rules of construction and interpretation will only get you through the 25th mile of the marathon. That last mile can only be determined on the basis of one's deepest values, one's core concerns, one's broader perspective on how the world works and the depth and breadth of one's empathy. In those 5 percent of really hard cases, the constitutional text will not be directly on point. The language of a statute will not be perfectly clear. Legal process alone will not lead you to a rule of decision. In those circumstances, your decisions about whether or not affirmative action is appropriate response to the history of discrimination in this country, or whether or not a general right of privacy encompasses a more specific right of women to control their reproduction, or whether the Commerce Clause empowers Congress to speak on those issues of broad national concern that may only tangentially relate to what is easily defined as interstate commerce, whether a person who's disabled has the right to be accommodated that they, so that they can work alongside those who are non-disabled. In those difficult cases, the critical ingredient is supplied by what's in the judge's heart. Now, I talked to Judge Roberts about this, and Judge Roberts confessed that, unlike maybe professional politicians, it's not easy for him to talk about his values and his deeper feelings. That's not how he's trained. He did say that he doesn't like bullies and has always viewed the law as a way of evening out the playing field between the strong and the weak. I was impressed with that statement because I view the law in much the same way. The problem I had is that when I examined Judge Roberts' record and history of public service, it's my personal estimation that he has far more often used his formidable skills on behalf of the strong in opposition to the weak. The bottom line is this. I will be voting against John Roberts' nomination. See the world through other people's eyes. Now, empathy is a quality of character that can change the world.